This is Vietnam Part 1. Vietnam Part 1. You can see some of the pictures here. Um, we're going to really hit the Vietnam War pretty hard um, the next couple days. And uh, really, I want you to understand that the main theory behind this, why we went to Vietnam and, and uh, Korea and those areas, once again, we're talking about the containment policy, okay, the Truman Doctrine. We're going to contain communism. We had this belief that if we did not do this, that things would fall like dominoes in Southeast Asia. Hence, what is called the domino theory. You can see a picture of that here. You know, if one fell, they believed that they would all fall. So that is one of the main reasons why we go to these areas. Okay, so let's start with a little brief area of your essential questions. Um, let's start with a little brief background. Okay, 1945, the uh, Vietnam area was liberated from the Japanese by a man named Ho Chi Minh and his followers, Viet Minh. Okay, the followers of Ho Chi Minh. There's Ho Chi Minh right there. He was pro commie He was a communist. Okay. In 1946 to 47, the French refused to leave. The French had this area. This whole area was once called French Indochina. And uh, they didn't want to leave. And they were supported by the United States. Okay. They did not want to give up their occupation of that area. Meanwhile, the Viet Minh were being supplied by China and the USSR, and they, of course, wanted the French out, and there was a war. In 1954, that war will end. The French would be defeated at a place called Dien Phien Phu, and they will be out of Vietnam. They will pull their forces out of Vietnam. The French had a fort in Dien Phien Phu. Um, the communists laid siege on that fort for 55 days before the French surrendered, and the French agreed to pull out of Vietnam. And you can see this boat is loading up anybody that wanted to go with them. A lot of the Vietnamese came with them as well, and you can see that was called Your Passage to Freedom. Your Passage to Freedom. The French lost about 2,300 dead, 5,200 wounded, uh, over 11,000 POWs. The Viet Minh had over 23,000 casualties. Okay, but very similar to our war there, it was an unpopular war with the French. So then we will have this conference here called the Geneva Conference. Why does that keep coming up? And the Geneva Conference basically does a couple things. Okay, it says that. Vietnam will be split at the 17th parallel. So very similar to how Korea was split, Vietnam will be split in half at the 17th parallel line. Okay, The United States will support the South. That is the pro-democratic South. And we will also, we've talked about this already a little bit, um, we also agree to CETO. Okay? which is a mutual defense agreement. Now, CETO is nowhere near as powerful as NATO, okay? And we talked about some of the countries involved in that, but uh, it is a mutual defense agreement, okay? The U.S., France, China, USSR, and Vietnam were at this meeting. Um, they all agreed to divide at the 17th parallel. The U.S. supported the South, and the emperor, um, they agreed to free and open elections were supposed to be held, okay? But here, in this case, we don't allow that, okay? We kind of back out on that agreement because the fear was that if we elect, if we had allowed free elections, that uh, we fear that they may support the commie, commies and unite with the, with the North. Okay, so we're kind of taking a different road here. Okay. So in uh, South Vietnam, President Diem, who is a guy that we kind of handpicked, there's Diem, 
He refused the free elections. We supported that at, anyway. Um, because he also had been fighting the Japanese in World War II. Um, when the emperor left in exile, so did Diem. And meanwhile, Ho Chi Minh is, stays and fights. Diem then goes to the U.S. He comes to Ike's attention because he is anti-communist and he fought the Japanese. He's actually educated in private schools by French teachers. He was a devout Catholic in a country of Buddhist. Um, so um, we convinced the emperor to make Diem his prime minister. When the emperor died, Diem now becomes the president of South Vietnam. However, like we said, there won't be any free elections because, frankly, if there were Ho Chi Minh, the communists probably would have won. We support him because he's the best we can get. And we didn't exactly love him, but most importantly, he was anti-communist. Um, also, though, he wasn't uh, exactly uh, for democracy either, either as we're going to see. He was very crooked. He was accused of nepotism, which we will... Uh, Talk about uh, later with uh, JFK. JFK would be accused of nepotism as well. That's putting family members in power positions to expand your own power. For instance, Diem's brother was a police chief and would accept uh, money from the uh, prostitution cartels and drug cartels. Okay, so that's the problem. What we're going to have right there, and you're going to see some issues with that pop up later. Ike. President Eisenhower will send advisors, in quotes, to help Diem against the National Liberation Front, also known as the Viet Cong, or the BC. Okay, these advisors were Green Berets. They're an elite force. Um, this is a violation of the Geneva Convention. Okay, we're ignoring that. Um... And uh, basically, we're trying to control the National Liberation Front, the Viet Cong, the, the communists that are fighting within South Korea, or they're trying to control that. Diem, President Diem, was giving land back to wealthy landowners and forcing the poor to relocate, where Ho Chi Minh was doing the opposite. Okay, he's taking large plots of land and breaking them up and giving them to the poor families. So you can see where Ho Chi Minh, although communist, is going to be more popular with the average person in Vietnam who was a farmer. Diem, Diem continues to discriminate against non-Catholics. In a country of Buddhists, he's discriminating against the majority. So you can see where this is going to go. Okay, A lot of our advisors as well, and I wanted to mention this, CIA is very active in Vietnam, okay, it finds its new role of of uh, kind of controlling the situation or trying to control. JFK comes to power as president. He continues the advisors in 1961, and Diem begins his reign of terror against his own enemies. Okay, and here advisors on military tactics are sent, while Diem makes Catholicism the state religion. Okay, he actually converted from Buddhism himself. And uh, there's a class with Buddhist monks, and seven of them are killed over religion. So once again, he makes uh, Catholicism the main religion in a mostly Buddhist country. So obviously, <laughs> not probably not the greatest pick. This is a picture of a Buddhist that has set himself on fire. That was their way of protest. There's another gruesome picture of, uh, of that incident. This is one of many incidents. They will sit there, meditate, and set themselves on fire, obviously killing themselves. So that was their way of protesting the discrimination that was going on. Very powerful picture. 1963, there are now 16,000 advisors in Vietnam. Okay, this also happened to be the year where JFK and Diem were both assassinated, unrelated. Um, there's Diem, there's JFK, just moments before he's assassinated. Um, 
Advisors were not listed as combat troops. Okay, so we can send advisors in as many as we want. October, October Diem was being becoming more and more of an embarrassment to the U.S. because we backed him. Um, his own generals wanted to assassinate him, including his brother as well. Um, we knew this was going to happen, and we chose to do nothing to prevent it. Okay, so uh, he is assassinated in uh, in 1963. Next 10 months, there would be several more coups. Um, and uh, as we know, in November, JFK is assassinated too. Like I said, unrelated as far as, well, maybe... LBJ will uh, take over for JFK. We're going to get more into JFK. I don't need to just browse by JFK. He's got his own little unit. Uh, but LBJ will take over, and he says in my best LBJ impersonation, we will not send American boys to do what Asian boys ought to be doing. That's dead on, by the way. So he believes... That or he's saying that we are not going to send our troops to Vietnam, and we will see how quickly that changes. Because in the next year, 1964, we have what's called the Tonkin Gulf Resolution. Two U.S. destroyers were attacked. Our destroyers, one was called the USS Maddox. In the USS Turner Joy, two of our destroyers were attacked by North Vietnamese gunboats. LBJ says the U.S. will respond with proportional with a proportional attack, and so he orders the bombing of a North of North Vietnam. U.S. claims that we are in international waters. Okay, the truth is that we were not. Okay, we were actually running cover for a South Vietnamese ship, and we were in harm's way. But that's not what uh, our reasoning is. In fact, the second attack may not have even occurred. Okay, this is supposedly a picture of that attack. The ships were um, barely damaged, according to reports. So, we then pass what's called the Tonkin Gulf resolution you'll also see the Gulf of Tonkin resolution as well the resolution was formed uh, from Cong was from Congress and it gave the president the authority to use force to resist aggression to resist aggression LBJ wanted the appearance of a war without a declaration of war we did not want a declaration of war and you might ask yourself why why is that so important because if we declare war that's going to let China and the Soviets declare war on us, hence World War III. We don't want that. So January through April, we begin bombing North Vietnam. Okay, we use B-52s, and we bomb the crap out of them, put it uh, bluntly. Okay. By April 1st of 1965, we send in our troops. At the beginning of April, we have about uh, 3,500 troops arrive. And then you'll see this, how quickly this escalates. Okay, there's the number of troops. November of 65, we have 165,000. Over 1,000 of those will be killed. In 66, we have over 460,000. Five thousand of them were killed that year, and then we max out in '68 with uh, 543,000. Uh, the fighting escalates very quickly, and uh, we can, so will our um, numbers as well as far as casualties and such. And uh, you know, and uh, the cost of this as well, '66 six point. 1 billion, 67, 20 billion. Okay. Um, so we have a ton of troops. My dad actually went in 66 is when my dad gets there. So, all right, we will stop there. We will continue with the Tet Offensive in the next lecture.
Stay classy, Vandalia.